Uh, right, for the past 85 days I've been pretty much in lockdown, apart from popping into work occasionally, staring at the same four walls. But I'm lucky. I love those four walls. There are people who are desperate for a change of scenery. Back in March, there were many people about to move house, mortgage agreed or rent agreed with the landlord to be somewhere new until the shutters came down. So what do you do now? I'm in Expert Corner. Look at this. With somebody who knows, it's Kate Faulkner. It's great to have you here. You're a property analyst. Yeah. Uh, and you cover both rental and mortgages and, and home ownership as well. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about renters first because it does feel like they've been left to the, the last moment, really, at the bottom of the pile a little bit. Let's talk about the, the sort of situation they're in right now. So at the moment, it's, it's quite buoyant because uh, you can switch on the rental market a lot faster than you can home buying and selling. So uh, you can ring up an agent. There's, they've got lots of rules and regulations uh, about viewing safely and things like that. So uh, people can move now and renting fine. We're expecting rents to go up this year, but now with they tend to react to wages. We're not expecting those to go up. So actually, you should see that so much uh, at the moment okay um, a, a lot of them though I mean they've had this stay of eviction a little bit longer a couple of months extra some of them haven't been able to negotiate their rent so that's a real cliff edge isn't it uh, potentially so the eviction side is kind of double-edged sword so you've got um, normally you'd have two months and then you could go to a court and apply for eviction now you've got to give three months notice but the courts aren't going to be open till the end of August. So you think this has started in April, then you're going to have a backlog. So potentially keeping a roof over your head is much easier. That's good news for some people that genuinely can't afford to pay, not great for the landlord. But if you're in a situation where you're stuck with a tenant that's perhaps not being very kind to so in shared housing or something, or you, you're a neighbour and you've got a naughty tenant, that is causing a few problems. It's so going to be interesting to we'll see what happens in definitely. August, definitely. OK, we have got some questions from our viewers. Great. Let's hear first from Mikey Dawson. Before the lockdown, me and my fiance were due to move. However, since the crisis of COVID-19 has happened, we are currently both on universal credit. I just want to know that are private landlords going to be more reasonable when it comes to accepting housing benefit tenants, considering we're pretty much all in the same boat right now? Yeah, so tenants on benefits maybe didn't have the same choices before this. Has that changed now? Because so many more people are in the same boat. Yeah, so the short answer to that is yes, it has, and it will ongoing. But you might be surprised at the reasons. So landlords aren't, uh, they love renting to tenants on benefits because usually they stay in the property longer and they do look after it. Unfortunately, the way the benefits are paid and managed to tenants means that they are much more likely to go into arrears, which landlords are really frightened of, often through no fault of their own. So they are a riskier tenant from that perspective and that's why landlords is not the tenant's fault at all it's the way universal credit is paid however an interesting thing is going to happen now so you've got somebody who's been paid regularly hopefully by universal credit and now you've got somebody that might be on furlough for example who may or may not have a job in the future so where universal credit was higher risk because of the risk of unemployment you're kind of matching the two then you've got issues in the student market, issues maybe you, you, you did Airbnb type uh, renting in the past. So I'm hoping that more people will go towards uh, universal credit because it is somewhat less risky now versus other options. OK, so you can, wear, you, you can wear that with pride. You can actually go to your landlord and say, listen, this is a, not, not confirmed, but it's a regular payment yes. coming in. That's yeah. a good thing uh, for absolutely. you. Absolutely. That's great news. Let's have another question. This one's from Hannah Winlow. Hi, my name is Hannah and I'm looking to buy my first home. I'm concerned that after lockdown there will be limited availability of mortgages and that lenders will be more stringent on who they lend to. What are the options for first time buyers after this? Is that the case? You know, is the mortgage market tightening up for first time buyers? Well, don't panic, basically, because the mortgage market is changing daily and the first thing I'd say is absolutely it's first time by go work with a mortgage broker because we're losing some mortgages and gaining some others on a daily basis at this moment in time um, the good news is is there are still lots of options so you don't have what we call a high loan to value whereby uh, say you've got a 95 percent 
uh, mortgage or a 90%. So there's very few 95%, if any, around it's a small at this deposit, moment. big loan. Yes, exactly. Right. However, you do have things like the Help to Buy scheme, which is on new bills, but you just need a 5% deposit. You get a free loan for five years, so of course you still have to pay it back, um, which means you're only taking out a mortgage of 75%, and lenders like that, so you tend to get lower rates because you're seen as less risky. So there are still options, and of course you've got things like uh, shared ownership you can have a look at if you're struggling affordability-wise and we're expecting 95% mortgages to come back. This isn't like the last recession, which was credit crunch driven and the mortgage le and the lenders didn't have money. They have money to lend. So we're hoping that uh, first-time buyers won't uh, be in too much uh, uh, disadvantage. OK, it's good long. to remember, though, that loan from the government you, that's still a loan. You have to pay that back. It you is. have to build that into your calculations. Yeah. And not just that, but you have to pay 20% back of the value of the property, which you also have uh, to get that you pay to have a value at the end. Uh, a lot okay. of people work their way in, but not their way out. Very, very quick one from Hannah. Uh, she uh, was in the process of selling a rental home and downsizing. Uh, would you say uh, now is the right time to proceed with this? Is she better to wait until next year for a downsize? OK. Very difficult to answer this quickly, but I'm going to give it a go. So, if you have found a property that you really love, and it probably won't be around in six months' time, but you've got the funding and you're not going to be forced to sell that property, so maybe they might be buying the cash, for example, then you should just go for it because you've got your money and you, it might not be available. And you shouldn't worry about prices. It's the cost that you pay every month that's more important. Um, if you are nervous about losing your job, if you are not sure that you will be sort of with your partner in six months' time, this is not the time to do right. it. Hang on and wait. But worry more about the cost in, worry less about the price you pay. And the cost in with mortgages is very low at the moment. These are very, very complex subjects. Oh, we, yes. We're always limited in time. But what I would really like to do, Kate, is ask you back again so we can just talk about the rental market would love and to. the kind of challenges that uh, renters are facing now because I hear from them all the time. I know there's so much to deal with. But thank you so much for Pleasure. now. Uh, Kim.